Hi folks, Kenny the Vapen here, back again with another review. Hope you're all doing mighty fine. Welcome and thank you for joining me. Um, today we are looking at a mesh RDA um, and it is by Dan Vape and this is the Doom which is sitting on the G-Class. Very interesting one, this one. It's a um, new deck design. Um, 3D system, as they're calling it. So, yeah, before we get down, have a look at it. If you like what you see, like, share, subscribe, comment. Do all that good stuff. Um, and now, without further ado, let's get down. Oh, excuse me. Let's get down, have a look at it. So, we'll roll the brawl. Yeah. Right, folks, here we are down at the table looking at the whoop, upside down the Doom Mesh RTA. Basically, this is the box, got your little window. Um, see the tank itself on the side, you've got Dam Vape, and there's just the red cycle to sleeve. On here, you have obviously your, your color, which is stainless steel in mine, um, Dam Vape, the authenticity code, all that stuff. Um, on the back, it's just a contents. 3D liquid flow system, slow blow airflow, pure tasty flavour, package contents, all that good stuff. Now, when you open it up, this is what you're presented with. You have the RDA itself, which we'll put down there. You have a spare glass with obviously Doom logo on it. And you have this little thing. This is the this is the coily tool for bending your mesh round, so we'll be leaving that out. Underneath the felt pad, if you can get it out very tight, is your normal bag of spares. That key, little rubbers, we'll get that key out in a moment because we're going to need that as well. You have two mesh coils. Both are A1 Cantho, 45 to 70 watts. One is a, if you can see that as a hex mesh passion, hex mesh, a hex mesh pattern. The other one is a quad mesh pattern. Hex is coming up to 0.13 ohms. Quad is 0.11 ohms. Um, and you also get some cotton and your destruction manual, as I like to call it. Basically, it is just telling you how to wick it. Um, there's no specifications in here at all. But, oh God, hang on, unprepared, if you bear with us. Shit, shit, shit. If you bear with us, I'm back again. I have got some specs on it. Um, basically, it is a 26 diameter. Um, the height, what they're stating without the drip tip, is 31.6 millimeters. It has a four milliliter juice capacity, top fill, and um, clamp style deck, adjustable airflow, um, 3D liquid system, which we'll look into in a minute, and a wide bore 810 drip tip. So that's all that sorted out. So we'll stick some of this stuff back out the way. You bear with us and just stuff everywhere again as usual. Put that all to the side, and uh, we shall have a look at 
the tank. Now inside you've got this plastic thing which is obviously for the TPD laws and um, that you can remove. From the top like you see you've got this nice Perspex clear ear 10 drip tip. O-ring is inside the the actual top cap so you can fit your other goon style tips etc. And to fill just unscrew the top and what you have are these great big kidney ports and they are big there mind Jesus when you just dump your juice in there screw that back on look down you've got like I see what doom written on the tank itself there's a three hole adjustable airflow so it's one on each side so whatever you do on one side do on the other a little bit uh, tight it has got stoppers um, and we would get down to the bottom gold plated 510 pin and it does protrude quite a bit as well so whether you want to stick that on a hybrid I don't know but that decision is entirely yours and on the bottom here we have all the doom stuff the CA marks have been doom designed by Dan the Ip. so basically to open this up to get the deck you unscrew this it's like a sleeve type thing like the aromamizer um, you unscrew that and you actually pull the deck out like so it is like I say very tight look inside there it's, to me the machining isn't great either it's it's not fantastic machining but you get the general idea um, this side if you bear with I'll get me pointer zoom come in a bit with a zoom and all yeah we are with there we are this side here is your airflow intake this side here is your juice intake massive massive holes the chimney is very small very fully where my gun with this camera Christ on me I'm getting used there you go chimney's very small but the machining is not great um yeah that's your inside I mean it is intricate machining um oh but there are still lots and lots of machine marks etc on there which probably could be better but moving aside of that get the star of the show this fella let's have a quick zoom in here so you can see what i'm doing Oop, hang on what happened there there we go you can see what we're doing now this is your deck two clamp system there and there screw on this side screw on the other side undo them that's your clamps this is your juice flow here now look at this i can put that screwdriver straight under there and that is where this 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 is where this tank is totally different from every other mesh tank get your words out ken basically your mesh coil will sit here over there like that your wick will be going through there you'll be dropping your wick into these wick holes but you don't want to totally dam these up because if you look that there goes all the way under there and you now have holes here so this is basically going to direct juice straight into the middle of your cotton imagine your coil sitting on top of your cotton there that's going to be direct so that's going to be the middle of your cotton getting absolutely drenched as well as your ends that's where this betters from other tanks because most of them even I suppose normal coil tanks rely on your wicks being wicked from the end and soaking in. So your your weakest point in that there chain, so to speak, is the centre because that is what gets um, warmed up and heated up first, and that's what's probably going to go dry first. Not too bad in coils, uh, normal coils. You know your your wrap coils, your staggered fuse clamps, all that kind of stuff, because you can tend to feel when the dry hits coming, but with the mesh coils you can't so this here is a very good idea you have an o-ring here which is in this here these are four seals here which when that goes into the tank it seals the airflow from the juice so it's nicely sealed up only goes in the one way basically your screws are where your air is uh, the airflow just lines up with that like that sorry i'm drifting off this camera a bit people the airflow lines up the screw because basically the, the air comes in, hits that, goes up, goes up to here, 
hits that, bounces out and comes across your coils. And that folks is basically it. You just slot that in again, you just, it does click and feel it, it lines up and then you just push it in like so. Then you just screw your sleeve on. Like I said, this is very aromaizer based, exactly the same kind of thing. And they do that like that. So what should we do? We'll put a build on this, eh? So I'll find a mod. Oh by the way folks, I've finally gone to the G class because the other one broke, so this will be going on the G class. You bear with us. G class is there. Right, unscrew this. Take the deck back out. And put this on the G class. And make all mesh coils are pretty decent to build on. I'm gonna use the the hex because the general rule of thumb is for some reason it's just a bit better for the flavour. Um, so I'll use that again, the canthols. This one is like I say rated ah to be bear with I can get this bloody thing back in. This one here is rated at 0.13 ohms. And there's the fella there. And where am I? You can see that. Basically what you get, I'll just move that to the side from there. You get your mesh, you get your little tool, you've got a little groove there which sits in. Just bend it round like so, give it a bit of a roll. What you end up is with the mesh almost perfectly half rolled like so. If you can see that, it's over there. Oh, well. But anyway, we'll get into here. Let's undo these clamps. There's the aura air. <coughs> Mainly a Phillips or a flathead. I mean, I can get a flathead in here as well. And a bit of both. Screws aren't too bad, actually. Let's see, just give that a tap to open it up. Hold that. Give that one a tap, open it up. You get them like that. Basically, you just, you know, get your mesh seated into them clamps. Put your finger on, make sure it's sitting nice and flush. Like so. I'm trying to make it so you can see people, but give it a nip on one side, turn it round. Give it a nip on the other side. And once that's in, give them a nice little bit of a clip. Clip? Bloody nip, man. A right, bit of a nip. And basically, folks, that is it. Coiled. So, I like to burn them in a bit. So I'm going to whop it right down. 20 watts, just give it a little pulse. That's all you want, just burns all the shit off, like the oils and everything off your fingers. And that is basically ready to go for the wicking. Now, wicking on this. This is the fun part. I will just use a bit of what's. I'm going to use what's came with it just for the convenience sake, so to speak. I don't know what kind of cotton it is, but we'll give it a go anyway. Just get your cotton. Give it a twist. Pinch and a twist. Pinch and twist. Feed it through. Now you want this tight. It's the thing with wicking mesh because you want it tight. Like literally be pulling it through like so. Because you want all that all that mesh to be in contact with cotton because if not you will get a hot spot or a dry hit as the dreaded dry hit so basically with this once you get this cotton in the general consensus is it's probably too much in there but you see this ledge here we'll kind of cut it level with this edge you put your scissors up against that edge give it a cut same on the other side Scissors up against that ledge, give it a cut, 
And there you have it. Get your tweezers. God, I'm sick of going off this camera. I'm bloody losing my bearings. But there you go. Put your finger on end. Give it a little bit of a rake. Just thin it out a touch. Like so. See on this end. Put your finger on the end. Give it a nice little bit of a rake. Just to thin it out a touch, you know. Wish they were killing your coil like that is, but never mind. There you go. Give it all a bit of a rake out. And what you're looking to do with this? Oh, fluff your cotton up on the ends there. Fluff your cotton up again on the ends. What you do want to look to do with this? Is you want to drop it from the bottom and just tease it down into that. And what happens is as soon as you see that cotton you see that it's starting to stick through there now that's when you stop you don't want to shove it in bung it in there and block this because you're going to stop the juice going to the, the center ports and that's where you want you just want to just poke it through stop see when you other side get the bottom bottom end of the cotton just poke it through Gently poke it in, as soon as you see it starting to come through, then you stop. Simple as that. And all you do after that is give it a bit of a haircut. Now you just trim off your excess. Like so. See him here. You don't need all the stuff on the top, you know, it's going to wick from there. You're probably looking for something like that like that you see it's just poking through there see that just let it poke through you see that just just so you can see it see them on the other side just so you can see it coming through tidy it up a bit still you know you can just funny on with it Oops, sorry tidy it up a bit still we just want it poking through and that is how you wick it basically. So, you bear with us. We now need to get some juice again. I'm not prepared. One more, please. God, what I like. Alright, we've got more juice. Which is, um, oh, my usual, by the way, folks. I'll just zoom this camera out a bit now because you can obviously you can see the build on that there now. So, I'll have that. I'll zoom this out back out oh my god that's terrible there we go zoom back out basically get your juice which in my case I'm using the old butter cherry cake dodger stuff again and just start soaking everything coil the wick you just want to absolutely drench everything on this absolutely soak it again when you do the coil just give it a little pulse put more juice on pulse it put more juice on pulse it a bit more on the wicks go nicely soaked up more on pulse it and very well you're pulsing it bear in mind keep in eye if you see any bits of red any red at all means it's not wick that means it's gonna be a hot spot but as you can see that's pretty good a bit more juice on and there you go what i'm going to do now is take this plastic uh, liner out of the tank because obviously it's just sucked in there like for our tpd bollocks Bear with us, everything's coming out of this bag, it's all the same. I'm gonna get one thing out and I get everything out. Typical, typical, typical. Basically all I wanna do here is just unscrew this top here, put that down, I've got everything a clip. You put this tool in, and let's hope to see how tight it is. Oh, that wasn't too bad. Unscrew your top. Basically this just disassembles the whole thing. Pop your glass off pop that stupid ring out it's just now the use of the ornament put your glass back on your top back on 
bearing in mind you don't want to horse it down you know you don't want to break your glass just you know dip it with your hands just give it a little nip with that jobs are good there's your top lovely doubly that's how it looks like with that so now what i want to do is put this on and you just want to wiggle it on over the top make sure you line the air all just give it a wiggle like so so it goes in just nicely that's it just wiggle it and press it down and we'll unscrew it off the deck you see that is now in there nice and flush it's all lined up properly where it should be I'll put this bottom collar on just to make sure it doesn't fall out which it shouldn't because it does feel nice and tight again just a nip and then we'll juice this fella up like so just fill it right up with the old juice there the idea behind this at the bottom is it did actually literally flood your deck out but without the leak and basically what you're looking for if you leave that top off let the air pressure go you know if there's if it's not wicked right it'll just you know the air will come in and it'll just leak you know what i'm saying so if we just put this top on now nip everything up finger tight basically that is it people the doom rt all wicked ready to go so what i'll do is i'll screw back on the old j class here Get tidied up down here we'll take it back up top and uh yeah i'll give you my thoughts see you in a bit hi and welcome here we are back up top still checking out the doom odd here um we're sitting on the g class it's coming up about 1.7 ohms. I've got it at, um, well, I might drop it down a bit actually. I'm going to stick it in at, uh, say, 55 watts. And we'll have a two, yeah? Wow. <coughs> Jesus, flavor is good. very good now my thoughts on this one are basically well my main gripe is Wiccan Wiccan as you've seen on the table the Wiccan was absolutely fine for 70 30 PG VG PG juice and um, Max VG is a different kettle of fish um, I wicked it exactly like on the table, ran the 70-30, brilliant, gorgeous, gorgeous. Then I put some Max VG in, um, which, if you forgive me, is normally this. You know, this one here, it actually says on the side there, Max VG. When I put that in, on that same wick, I had absolutely dry hit hell. I don't even know how my lungs are still functioning because it literally felt like you were taking a hot coal off a fire and sitting and shoving it down your throat. That's how bad it was. Um, so I've had a play about with the Wigan. Um, I found that if you just sit it on top of them juice holes, just sit it, don't bung it right through, just sit it juice it up bring it in juice it up do the normal and then look where you when your cotton is expanded it will come into the hole a bit when it does that and it's dropping through lift it back up the way i do it you want no cotton none at all sticking through them juice wells none at all because the vg as soon as it hits that cotton it's gone up it's not really gone into the middle bit 
or with your cotton being packed tightly into the the coil obviously so it's got full contact it's not really absorbing into that in the middle so i found doing that maximize the flow of juice to the center of the cotton it is about an 80 percent success rate i've got this in here now max vg would i chain it probably not 70 30 all day but i think it struggles a little with max vg don't get us wrong i could be doing something totally wrong you know not enough cotton too little cotton whatever still technically playing about with it regarding the max vg stuff but i've had a bit of a nightmare trying to get this to wick max vg um and even when i did go to work i think what was the coils max you know they were 45 or 70 watts i couldn't get them over 50 55 watts without starting to feel that burn where it wasn't wicking as well as it should be so again it could be an error on my part but i just thought i'd point that out um it's a bit of a get if you're going to run max vg 70 30 brilliant wicks dream vapes fantastic flavors fantastic they have pretty much good points i mean the the deck itself is very innovative 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 i can't even see it but you get the gist um with having that juice you know getting into the middle of the cotton because you know that's the weakest part of your cotton on any kind of build you know the coils or mesh you know the middle of the cotton gets the most heat and that's going to dry out first so that's what you want wicking and it is a damn good idea and it does work when i put the 70 30 this the flavor of this thing is absolutely phenomenal no leaks you would think because it's flooding that deck out that they would just absolutely piss out you know what i mean um but it is a bit unforgiving if you wick it wrong it goes wrong badly if you wick it right it's fantastic a bit like the the kylans really you know you get them wrong it either pisses out or you get dry hit hell get them right and they run like a dream this is a similar similar kind of strategy with this um take care with the wicking um like i say building on it doddle wicking it is technically a doddle putting the wick in but it's just getting getting it right for that vj juices of pain method i showed on the bottom there works fine with 70 30 vg but like i see if you're going up to the higher ends hmm, it gets a bit tricky um like i see if i've got that high vg in now i'm on 55 watts you know what i mean i'd uh, i can be a bit you know it's not a problem vaping it you know but i would say that's as far as i would push it though for chaining so <laughs> but generally if normal vaping it's running well and um, flavor's still there everything's fantastic so yep the wiccan is the issue with this other gripes machine's a little bit um below par on it okay now i've got that on there tight jesus anyway um i also noticed i didn't show you on the table but um the edge on here right on the bottom on this collar is also pretty you can feel some sharp edges on that so the machining could be better but it's not bad you know it's not the end of the world but it could be better um but the good point with it my god the flavor of it's unbelievable absolutely fun when you get this thing right god it's 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 not far off an rda standard you know what i mean probably might be matching some rda in my eyes you know what i mean it's really really good airflow is very restrictive it's it's not good wide open it's there's a little bit of restriction there um 
there's obviously been a tiny small tank here um, that can be expected but it sits part of the way they go now you know the bit of restrictive airflow which increases or enhances the flavor um, so yeah would I recommend it for a beginner I'd be on the fence um, if that person is running 70-30 yeah it's, a, it's an absolute dull piece of cake but if you're running higher VGs mm, I don't know um, probably not unless you can you know get it to run these high VG juices I barely get I barely get it to run the high VG so this could be me somebody could go and do one tomorrow or whatever and get it wigging like a dream it just it, it's probably doable but it is a bit of a, a faff on so I would definitely give it a thumbs up when it's performing when it's performing it's performing well and the flavor is absolutely phenomenal of it um, you know this is my first mesh tank that I've reviewed um, there's other ones so you know I can then eventually compare it to them when I get them but generally it's it's yeah it's better than I thought it would be um, but yeah with that being said, we'll leave it at that one. I've been Kenny the Vape and Heed. Stay safe, vape safe. And I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Cheers. Bye now.